Are there different types of prime numbers? Yes, there are different types of prime numbers, including the following. Mersenne A prime C the box text for an explanation twin primes primes of the form P and P plus 2, in other words. They differ by 2, discovering such a prime involves finding 2 primes. Factorial slash primorial primes primorial primes are of the form n hashtag plus or minus 1, factorial primes are of the form n plus or minus 1. Sophie Germain primes this is an odd prime p for which 2p plus 1 is also a prime. It was named after Sophie Germain, 1776 to 1831. Who proved that the first case of Fermat's last theorem for exponents was divisible by such primes? Other names for prime numbers are mainly for descriptive purposes. For example, in 1984, mathematician Samuel Yates defined a titanic prime to be any prime with at least 1,000 digits. In the past few decades since his definition, there have been over a thousand times more such primes discovered. Yates also coined the term gigantic prime to indicate a prime with at least 10,000 digits. A great deal has happened in the last few decades, so it is only a matter of time before the first 10 million digit prime is found. Although it is still unknown what name that prime number will be given. Who is Benoit Mandelbrot? Benoit B. Mandelbrot, 1924, is the Polish-born, French mathematician who invented a branch of mathematics called fractal geometry, which is designed to find order in apparently erratic shapes and processes. A largely self-taught mathematician who did not like pure logical analysis. He was a pioneer of chaos theory, developing and finding applications for fractal geometry. Unlike traditional geometry with its regular shapes and whole number dimensions, fractal geometry uses shapes found in nature with non-integer, or fractal thus the name, dimensions. For example, twigs, tree branches, river systems, and shorelines can be examined using fractals. Today, fractals are often applied not only to the natural world but also to the chemical industry. Computer graphics, and even the stock market. How was math used to discover extrasolar planets? Astronomers have always dreamed about detecting other planets outside our solar system. Or extrasolar planets. In 1994, Polish astronomer Aleksander Wolzsen, 1946, announced the discovery of the first extrasolar planet actually. It was two planets with masses 3.4 and 2.8 times that of Earth's mass orbiting the pulsar PSR B1257 plus 12. A pulsar star sends out a periodic pulse of light detected from Earth. Wolzsen found the planets by measuring the periodic variation in the pulse arrival time. 
there are several major methods used to search for extrasolar planets. And all of them entail using mathematics. For example, the Doppler shift method measures the change in wavelength. Color, of light coming from a star over the course of days, months, and years. The change in wavelength or the Doppler shift of the light is caused by the star orbiting a common center of mass with a companion planet. An example in our own solar system is the gas giant Jupiter. Its massive gravitational pull causes the sun to wobble around a circle with a velocity of 39.4 feet, 12 meters, per second. Another detection method is called astrometry. Which measures the periodic wobble that a planet causes in the position of its parent star. In this case, the minimum detectable planet mass gets smaller. In inverse proportion to the planet's distance from the star. These methods work, and by 2005 more than 150 such planets have been discovered. What is the most well-known coordinate system? The most well-known coordinate system is the Cartesian coordinate system. Cartesian coordinates, as part of Cartesian geometry, are determined by locating a point using the distances, measured in various units, from perpendicular axes. This system uniquely marks the position of a point on a plane by using two numbers. Cartesian coordinates, or in three-dimensional space by using three numbers thus. Giving their distances from two or three mutually perpendicular lines, Cartesian axes. What is information theory? Information theory is a branch of the mathematical theory of probability and statistics. Allowing it to quantify concepts of information. It was formulated primarily by American scientist Claude E. Shannon, 1916-2001, who was also called the father of information theory. To explain the aspects and problems inherent in information and communication. In particular, it involves efficient and accurate storage, transmission, and representation of information. Such as the engineering requirements and limitations of communication systems. Note. Information theory has nothing to do with library and information science or with information technology. In information theory, the term information is not used in the traditional sense. Here it is used to mean a measure of the freedom of choice with which a message is selected from the set of all possible messages. Because it is possible for a string of nonsense words and a meaningful sentence to be equivalent. With respect to information content, information in this sense takes on a different meaning. How are positions on Earth determined? Positions on Earth are determined using two numbers that represent latitude and longitude. 
these numbers are actually two angles, measured in degrees. Degree, minutes of arc, and seconds of arc. On a globe of the Earth, latitude lines circle parallel to the equator. And differ in length depending on their location. The longest line is at the equator, latitude 0 degrees, the shortest lines actually pinpoints are at the poles. 90 degrees north at the north pole, 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees south at the south pole. In the northern hemisphere, latitude degrees increase as you move north away from the equator. In the southern hemisphere, latitude degrees increase as you move south away from the equator. Longitude lines, or meridians, once called meridian lines and eventually shortened to meridians. Are those that extend from pole to pole. Slicing the earth like segments of an orange, with each meridian crossing the equator. In the western hemisphere, longitude increases as you move west from Greenwich, England. 0 to 180 degrees. In the Eastern Hemisphere, longitude also increases as you move east from Greenwich. England, again, 0 to 180 degrees. All points on the same line of longitude experience true noon, and any other hour, at the same time. But note, Longitude lines are not to be confused with time zones. Most of which follow a more erratic demarcation. For more information on time zones, see below, for more information about latitude. And longitude with regard to polar coordinates, see geometry and trigonometry. What is the fundamental theorem of the calculus? The fundamental theorem of the calculus is the connection, or, more accurately, the bridge, between the integral and the derivative, in other words. It is another way of finding the area under a curve, see above, by evaluating the integral. In particular, if f, x, is a function whose derivative is f, x, then the area under the graph of y equals f, x, between the points a and b is equal to f, b, f, a. What mathematical concept was featured in the movie The Andromeda Strain? The concept of exponential growth, also known as geometric growth. Provided the tension in this movie and the book on which it was based. The basic premise was that microscopic organisms had been inadvertently brought to Earth from outer space by a returning satellite. Once on Earth, they reproduced exponentially, doubling in number every 20 minutes. Very quickly, they spread over the entire planet, killing nearly everyone. And no, we won't give away the ending. What was the Sumerian oral counting system? The Sumerians whose origins are debated. 
but who eventually settled in Mesopotamia used base 60 in their oral counting method. What are the odds when playing craps? Craps is probably the most popular game of chance in the world, it is also illegal to play in many places. But it has a long history, it was played in ancient Greece and Rome and was even a mainstay of some old 1930s and 40s movies. Craps can be played using a wall and a pair of dice. It is a popular casino game in places such as Las Vegas and even on the internet with betting on craps involving a complex equation. Its popularity no doubt comes from its simplicity. In craps, a player throws two dice, their number, roll, is the total of the dots on the top faces of the dice. If the initial roll is a 7 or 11, called a natural, the player wins. If the number 2, 3, or 12 comes up called craps the player loses, but keeps the dice. If the sum of the dice adds up to the number 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10. That number becomes the thrower's point. The player then continues to shoot until he or she throws the point number again. In which case the gambler wins and retains the dice. But if the player shoots a sum of 7 before he or she can roll the point value, he or she loses and gives the dice to the next player. Craps is truly a game of chance, with the probability mathematics of craps. Fairly straightforward. For example, take the probability of winning on a roll by roll basis. In which p, p equals n, is the probability of rolling a point n. The resulting numbers show that the probability of winning is 244 slash 495. Or the shooter wins about 49.2929% of the time. What is dimensional analysis? Simply put, dimensional analysis is a way of manipulating unit measures using algebra to determine the proper units for a quantity that is being computed. For example, the units of length over time represent velocity in feet per second. Acceleration is velocity over time. Thus, acceleration will then have units of feet per second per second, or feet per second squared. What are the base SI units? There are several base units at the heart of the international system, SI. The following lists the seven base units, meter, distance, kilogram, mass, related to weight, second, time. Ampere, electric current, Kelvin, temperature, mole, amount of substance, candela, intensity of light. Still other SI units called SI-derived units are defined algebraically in terms of the above fundamental units. All the base units are consistent with the metric system called the MKS. 
or MKS, system, which stands for meter, kilogram, and second. Another metric system is the CGS, or CGS, system, which stands for centimeter, gram, and second. Are there double and triple integrals? Yes, there are double and triple integrals and even multiple integrals in equations, jj, jjj, and so on. For example, the integration of a function of three variables, w equals f, x, y, z. Over a three-dimensional region R in X, Y, Z space, three-dimensional space, is called a triple integral. What was Pythagoras' importance to mathematics? Although the Chinese and Mesopotamians had discovered it a thousand years before. Most people credit Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras of Samos, c. 582 c. 507 BCE, with being the first to prove the Pythagorean theorem. This is a famous geometry theorem relating the length of a right angled triangle's hypotenuse h, to the lengths of the other two sides, a and b. In other words, for any right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides. What are examples of unlucky and lucky numbers in different cultures? The concept of lucky and unlucky numbers in various cultures abounds. As many people agree, it's actually the luck of the draw that determines a lucky or unlucky number. Some cultures have tried to attach good or bad fortunes to numbers. For example, in terms of good luck and fortune, the number 7 seems very popular in many cultures. It is the holy number, symbolizing God in all forms, and is considered sacred to many people. The Japanese, for instance, have seven gods of good fortune, the Egyptian god Hathor can be seven cows at once. And there are the seven days of creation in the Bible, actually, the seventh was a day of rest. On the other hand, the same number can represent something that is bad. For example, many mythological monsters have seven heads, in Native American lore. The Sioux saltwater snake Unscala could only be killed by a blow to her seventh spot. And the seven deadly sins avarice, envy, gluttony, lust, pride, sloth, and wrath is a western cliché. One famous unlucky number is 13, which is thought by most western people to be bad luck because of the connection between Judas Iscariot the disciple and betrayer of Jesus who was the thirteenth man in the room at the Last Supper. But in other places, such as Italy and China, thirteen is considered lucky. Even ancient civilizations did not shy away from the number thirteen. In the Celtic and Native American systems of astrology, there were thirteen lunar months in the year and thirteen astrological signs.
How do astronomers determine the distances to the stars? Relatively nearby objects beyond the solar system appear to shift position relative to more distant objects as the Earth moves from one side of the Sun to the other a phenomenon called parallax. You can use parallax to determine the distance to stars. As long as these stellar objects are within a few dozen light years of Earth, more distant objects in the sky do not change their position. Enough as the Earth orbits from one side of the Sun to the other. First, measure the position of the star in the sky, then. Measure it again in six months when the Earth is on the opposite side of its orbit. If the distance A and the angle AC are known, as seen in the diagram below. Using trigonometry, C can be determined as A slash cos, AC. What were some of the contributions by the Arab world to mathematics? From about 700 to 1300, the Islamic culture was one of the most advanced civilizations in the West. The contributions of Arabic scholars to mathematics were helped not only by their contact with so many other cultures, mainly from India and China, but also because of the Islamic empire's unifying, dominant Arabic language. Using knowledge from the Greeks, Arabian mathematics grew, the introduction of Indian numerals. Often called Arabic numerals, also helped with mathematical calculations. When was the first arithmetic book published in North America? In 1556 the first arithmetic book was published in North America by Brother Juan Diaz Frail, a Franciscan friar. The name of the book was Sumario Compendioso de las Cuentas de Plata y Oro que en los Reinos del Piru. Son necesarias a los mercaders y todo genero de tratantes, con algunas reglas de cantes al arithmetica. The title translates as Comprehensive Summary of the Counting of Silver and Gold. Which, in the kingdoms of Peru, are necessary for merchants and all kinds of traders. The book explained the conversion of gold or into value equivalents in different types of coinage in the old world. Problems that required the use of ratios and proportions. Diaz also included a short chapter on algebra. The first English-language mathematics book written in North America was published in 1729 by Isaac Greenwood and titled Arithmetic, Vulgar and Decimal, Vulgar refers to the common people. Greenwood's life was also somewhat vulgar, he was appointed to the first Hollis Professorship of Mathematics and Natural Philosophy at Harvard University in Massachusetts when it was founded in 1727. By 1737 he was removed for intemperance. Reportedly, he drank too much, and more than likely his views, philosophical and otherwise, 
differed greatly from those of his colleagues at the university. What is computational sociology? Computational sociology is a branch of sociology that uses computation to understand social phenomena. It takes great advantage of statistics to determine trends in data. And uses computer simulation in the construction of social theories. It is also referred to as the study of social complexity. What is Boolean algebra? Boolean algebra is an abstract mathematical system used to express the relationship between sets, groups of objects or concepts. It is important in the study of information theory, the theory of probability, and the geometry of sets. The use of Boolean notation in electrical networks aided the development of switching theory and the eventual design of computers. It was English mathematician George Boole, 1815 to 1864, who first developed this type of logic by demonstrating the algebraic manipulation of logical statements, showing whether or not a statement is true. And showing how a statement can be made into a simpler, more convenient form without changing its overall meaning. Today, this way of looking at logic is called Boolean algebra. For more information about Boole, see History of Mathematics. Boolean algebra did not end there, in 1881 the English logician and mathematician John Venn 1834-1923, interpreted Boole's work and introduced a new way of diagramming Boole's notation in his treatise Symbolic Logic. This was later refined by the English mathematician Charles Dodgson, 1832-1898, who was better known as the writer of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, under the pseudonym Lewis Carroll. Today, when studying sets, we call this method not the Boole. Carroll, or Dodgson diagram, but the Venn diagram. Thus, Boolean notation demonstrates the relationship between groups. Indicating what is in each set alone, what is jointly contained in both, and what is present in neither. Geometry is the study of figures or objects in space of a certain number of dimensions. And types and focuses on the properties and measurements of points, lines, angles, surfaces, and solids of those objects, or sometimes even the space around them. The word geometry is from the Greek words for earth and to measure. Geometria, broken down into GE and Metrian, respectively. A person who studies geometry is called a geometer or geometrician. How did people in the Renaissance approach architecture? During the Renaissance, not only mathematics but also architecture made great strides. In particular, church buildings were no longer based on the shape of the cross, but rather on the circle. 
This is because Renaissance architects believed that ancient mathematicians equated circles with geometric perfection. And that the circle must then represent the perfection of God. Have computers been used to solve mathematical proofs? This idea was first presented in 1852, when Francis Guthrie 1831 to 1899, colored a map of English counties using only four colors. The idea of only four colors took on a mathematical bend and ended up being a theorem to be proved. It took until 1976, with the help of modern computers. Before the four color conjecture was finally proven to be true. But some mathematicians are troubled by this computer proof. Feeling that the theorem is so easy to understand that it should have been proven by hand. Thus, anyone who can prove the theorem without using a computer may win the Fields Medal. The math equivalent of the Nobel Prize. Another proof solved with computers is the double bubble. The double bubble refers to a pair of bubbles that intersect. They are also separated by a membrane bounded by the intersection of the two bubbles. This is similar to two bubbles stuck together when a child blows bubbles using a water and soap mixture. Since the ancient Greeks, Mathematicians have worked on the problem of finding a mathematical proof of the efficiency of a single round bubble. The problem became even more rigorous when considering enclosing two bubbles or two separate volumes. The problem was solved around 1995 by mathematicians Joel Haas, Michael Hutchings, and Roger Schlafly. They used a computer to calculate the surface areas of the bubbles and found that the double bubble has a smaller area than any other when the enclosed volumes are the same. But this isn't the last word, scientists are currently working on triple bubbles. Why is it difficult to win a lottery? According to one state lottery site, a lottery is a plan that provides for the distribution of money, property, or other reward or benefit to persons selected by chance from among participants some or all of whom have given a consideration for the chance of being selected. In other words, a person buys a chance at winning a certain sum of money. But in reality as with many games of chance the game is not in the participant's favor. With most lotteries, such as a lotto-type lottery, a person has a better chance of being in a car or plane accident or even being hit by lightning then winning. But that doesn't stop many people. One recent statistic shows that, in the United States, an average of more than $96 million is spent on lotteries every day, or more than $35 billion per year. The reason for this dream of winning is simple, it's how this game of chance is perceived. Many people believe that if they just keep the same number, it will eventually be chosen. What they often don't understand when playing a lottery is the idea of replacement. Take a 52-card deck to represent a lottery. 
with the participant asked to choose a card as the winning card, such as the Queen of Hearts. In the first choice, the King of Diamonds is picked, and not reshuffled back into the deck. After each choice, if the cards are not put back into the deck, eventually. The participants chances of picking the Queen of Hearts gets better and better. After all, the choices of cards in the deck become less. If one card is left, the participant knows he or she will win. But a regular lottery does not reshuffle the numbers. Instead, lotteries chose from the same group of numbers each week. Which makes it even more difficult to win. There may be repetitions in winning numbers. But the odds of winning are the same each time the lottery is played. For example, the odds of winning a recent California Super Lotto game were 1 in 18 million. Thus, if a person bought 50 lottery tickets a week, his or her chances of winning would be once every 6,923 years. What do the terms random and stochastic mean in probability? When speaking about probability, the term random means the outcomes of an experiment have the same probability of occurring. Because of this, the outcome of the experiment produces a random sample. Random also is commonly thought of as being synonymous with stochastic, which is from the Greek word meaning pertaining to chance. It is usually used to indicate a particular subject seen from the point of view of randomness. Stochastic is often thought of as the opposite of deterministic. A term that means random phenomena are not involved. In the case of modeling, stochastic models are based on random trials. While deterministic models always produce the same output for a given starting condition. How did the Hindu Arabic numbers evolve? The evolution of the Hindu Arabic numbers was not a straight line from India to Arabia and on to Europe. In between, the Arabic cultures had more than one number SYS TEM to contend with. Including at least three different types of arithmetic, finger reckoning arithmetic, counting on fingers. A sexagesimal system with numbers written in letters of the Arabic alphabet, and Indian numeral arithmetic. The evolution of the Hindu Arabic numbers continued throughout time and includes some good reasons for why our numbers look as they do today. For example, historians believe that between 970 and 1082, the numbers 2 and 3 changed significantly. Rotating 90 degrees from their original written position. This is thought to be due to how scribes worked, sitting cross-legged. They wrote on a scroll they wound from right to left across their body. This caused them to write from top to bottom, not our usual left to right. The script was then rotated when the scroll was read.
How is mathematics used in physics to describe motion? Everything in the universe is in motion, from the rotating Earth to subatomic particles. Motion in physics is described mainly through mathematics, including speed, velocity, acceleration. Momentum, force, something that changes the state of rest or motion of an object, torque. When a force causes rotation or twisting around a pivot point, and inertia. A body at rest remains at rest, and a body in motion remains in motion, until acted upon by an outside force. Unlike what most people think, speed and velocity are not the same. Speed is the rate at which something moves, velocity is speed in a certain direction. Speed is also called a scalar quantity, described by the following formula, speed equals distance slash time. For example, if you drive 200 miles in 2 hours, and your speed is constant. Your average speed is 200 slash 2, or 100 miles per hour. On the other hand, velocity is known as a vector quantity. For more about vectors, see mathematical analysis. That gives velocity both speed and direction and that leads directly to acceleration. When an object's velocity changes, we say that it accelerates. Acceleration also a vector like velocity is represented as the change. In velocity divided by the time it takes for the change to occur. What is sabermetrics? Sabermetrics is the study of baseball using objective evidence, such as baseball statistics. It uses scientifically based data and various interpretation methods to explain why teams win and lose. Sabermetrics was taken from the acronym SABR, or the Society for American Baseball Research, and was coined by baseball historian, statistician, and writer Bill James, 1949. Has mathematics been used in art? Yes, mathematics has been used in art either consciously or not over the centuries. Many of the fine arts deal with trying to comprehend the reality around us. And because both art and math try to explain reality using some concrete or abstract elements. It's easy to see the connection. For example, there are some obvious relationships between art especially painting and mathematics. An observer can use geometry to analyze a painting in terms of shapes. Such as lines, points, circles, or other geometric shapes. Perspective can also be thought of as a mathematical quality of many realistic paintings. Allowing the viewer to see reality, in the case of a painting, in two dimensions. And, in a way, Jackson Pollock's method of literally throwing. Paint on a canvas can be thought of in terms of fractal geometry. Mathematicians may work with quantifying and counting. 
but most of them will tell you that math is really more than a technical exercise and juggling numbers. Creativity is involved in discovering nuances in certain mathematics. With the mathematician creatively deciding what to concentrate on in order to solve certain complex problems. Just like a picture. Mathematical concepts need to be created, invented, and discovered, much like the French painter Claude Monet, and others, invented Impressionism. What are the least common multiple and denominator? The smallest common multiple, whole number. Of two or more whole numbers is called the lowest, or least, common multiple, LCM. For example, for the numbers 3 and 8, the multiples of 8 are 8, 16, 24, 32, and so on. The multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and so on. Therefore, the LCM of 3 and 8 is 24. The least common denominator, LCD is mainly used to carry out the addition or subtraction of fractions. In order to do these operations, the fractions need to have the same denominator. For more information about fractions, see below. The easiest way to work on such calculations is to determine the lowest number. Possible for the denominator a number called the least common denominator. LCD, which is actually the common factor by which two numbers are divisible. For example, to add one sixth and one eighth, we have to find the least common multiple of the denominators. In this case, the number is 24. Multiply 1 sixth x 4 fourths and 1 eighth x 3 thirds, to change each addend to some number of 24 ths. Or 1 sixth x 4 fourths equals 4 20 fourths, and 1 eighth x 3 thirds equals 3 20 fourths. Thus, 1 sixth plus 1 eighth equals 4 20 fourths plus 3 20 fourths equals 4 plus 3, slash 24 equals 7 20 fourths. What is the difference between probability and odds? Probability is usually expressed as a fraction, sometimes as a percentage. For example, if there are 10 pieces of fruit in a jar 3 apples and 7 oranges then the Probability of taking out an orange is 7 tenths, or 7 chances of an orange out of a total of 10 chances. On the other hand, odds are expressed as the number of chances for or against, versus the number of chances against, or for. Thus, if there are 3 chances of picking an apple and 7 chances of picking an orange, the odds are 7 to 3 against you picking an apple. Just reverse this to find the odds in favor, or, in this example. The odds would be 3 to 7 in favor of picking an apple. In order to convert the odds to probability, just add the chances. Thus, if the odds against a horse winning the Kentucky Derby are 4 to 1, that means that out of 5, or 4 plus 1, chances, the horse has one chance of winning. 
that makes the probability of the horse winning one-fifth, or 20%. How are angles measured in trigonometry? Angles in trigonometry are measured using a circle on X and Y axis often called circle trig definitions. The radian measure of an angle is any real number 8, theta, see illustration. Are there more advanced concepts in arithmetic? Yes, arithmetic can even be more advanced than the ideas mentioned above. For example, higher arithmetic is the archaic term for number theory, which is the study of the properties of integers or whole numbers, 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. It can include anything from simpler arithmetic concepts to the more complex. Such as Diophantin equations, for more information about these equations. See algebra, prime numbers, see below, and functions such as the Riemann hypothesis. For more about Friedrich Bernhard Riemann, see History of Mathematics and Geometry and Trigonometry. There are other more advanced ideas in arithmetic, too. For example, modular arithmetic is known as the arithmetic of congruences, see below. The model theory discusses the existence of non-standard models of arithmetic. And floating point arithmetic is performed on real numbers by computers or other automated devices. What is statistics? The analysis of events governed by probability is called statistics. In statistics, a group of facts is collected and classified in a methodical manner. Which is why such a study is important to the fields of science. Finance, social research, insurance, engineering, and sundry other areas. In general, the data are grouped according to their relative number. Then certain other values are determined based on the characteristics of the group. The most important part of statistical theory is sampling. This is because in most applications, the statistician is not only interested in the characteristic of the sample but also the characteristics of some much larger population. For information about samples and populations, see below. Why did the need for mathematics arise? He reasons humans developed mathematics are the same reasons we use math in our own modern lives. People needed to count items, keep track of the seasons, and understand when to plant. Math may even have developed for religious reasons. Such as in recording or predicting natural or celestial phenomena. For example, in ancient Egypt, flooding of the Nile River would wash away all landmarks and markers. 
In order to keep track of people's lands after the floods, a way to measure the earth had to be invented. The Greeks took many of the Egyptian measurement ideas even further. Creating mathematical methods such as algebra and trigonometry. What does a plane mean in geometry? A plane in geometry or any other field of mathematics means a surface such that a straight line joining any two of its points lies totally in that surface. A plane is considered to be two-dimensional. When a plane is discussed with higher dimensions, it is called a hyperplane. Thus, in the majority of mathematical discussions, a plane can be thought of as a two-dimensional group. Of points that reach out to infinity in all directions, for more information about dimensions, see above. What is the new formula used for calculating wind chill? Most people know about wind chill, the temperature your body feels when it is exposed to a certain air temperature combined with a particular wind speed. The higher the wind speed, the colder the wind chill temperature and the faster the exposed areas of a person's body will lose heat, a process known as transpoevaporation. When moisture evaporates, the surface from which it evaporates loses some heat. The newest wind chill chart called the wind chill temperature index took over from the old chart. Developed in 1945, in the 2001 to 2002 winter season. The reason for the change was simple, the original wind chill index revolved around heat loss. With a standard set at the chill experienced while standing outside in air moving 4 miles, 2 kilometers, per hour. Based purely on temperature and wind and on how water freezes in plastic containers the charts were developed in Antarctica by Paul Sippel and his fellow explorer, P. F. Passel. Back in 1939, partly with the intention of being used in World War II battlefield planning. Not everyone was thrilled with this simplistic, two-factor interpretation, however. There were pieces missing from the wind chill puzzle, such as the fact that humans constantly generate heat to the lack of wind measurements above 40 and below 5 miles per hour, 64 and 5 kilometers per hour. Passel and Sippel's wind speeds were also taken about 33 feet, 10 meters, above the ground. Making the chart more valuable for a third floor office than ground level. But the biggest problem overall was that the old wind chill chart could not accurately predict how humans perceive temperature. Thus, the new wind chill index was created. This chart includes such changes as wind speeds calculated at the average height of a human head. About 5 feet 1.52 meters above the ground. It is based on a human face model and sundry other more modern considerations. The actual general formula for the wind chill has now changed to the following. Wind chill in degrees Fahrenheit equals 35.74 plus 0 0.6215 T 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75, 35.75
v0.16, plus 0.4275, v0.16. In which T is the air temperature, in degrees Fahrenheit, and V is the wind speed, in miles per hour. The biggest difference between the old and new indexes is that the new index usually registers warmer temperatures than the old index. Still, no matter what the equation or chart, when temperatures are icy cold and winds are high, everyone should be careful and bundle up. What is multiplication? The word multiply comes from the Latin roots multi, many, and play, folds. What is a limit of a sequence? The limit of a sequence is simply the number that represents a kind of equilibrium reached in the sequence. It is also phrased approaches as closely as possible. Limit is also a term used in calculus in relation to a function, see elsewhere in this chapter. What is architecture? Simply put, architecture is the design of structures, mainly buildings, by architects. But the definition does not end there. An architect not only builds the structures, he or she also takes into consideration the form, symmetry, spaces, and beauty of the building. In order to do this, Mathematics is needed to work out such building factors as angles, distances, shapes, and sizes. Who originated Cartesian coordinates? Cartesian coordinates are a way of finding the location of a point using distances from perpendicular axes. For more information about coordinates, see geometry and trigonometry. The first steps towards such a coordinate system were suggested by French philosopher, mathematician, and scientist René Descartes (1596–1650) in Latin, Renatus Cartesius. He was the first to publish a work explaining how to use coordinates for finding points in space. Around the same time, Pierre de Fermat developed the same idea independently, see below. Both Descartes and Fermat's ideas would lead to what is now known as Cartesian coordinates. Descartes is also considered by some to be the founder of analytical geometry. He contributed to the ideas involved in negative roots and exponent notation. Explained the phenomenon of rainbows and the formation of clouds, and even dabbled in psychology. What is a perfect square? Here are many equations that can be factored into a perfect square. 
Any expression written in the form x2 plus 2 x and a 2 is a perfect square and expression writ 2 10 as something. To determine if an expression is a perfect square, first see if the constant term is a square number in other words. Can the square root of the number be taken to get an integer for an answer? If so, determine if the square root of the constant multiplied by 2 gives the coefficient of the linear term, or the x term. If it does, the original expression may be factored into a perfect square. Note, the above procedure only works when the coefficient of x2 is 1. For example, in the equation x2 plus 8x plus 16, the constant term, 16, is already a perfect square, the square root of 16 is 4. Since 2, 4, equals 8, the original expression can be written as a perfect square. Because we know x2 plus 2 x and a 2 is a perfect square, and equals, x and a 2, by substituting the common factor 4 into the equation, we find that x2 plus 8x plus 16 equals, x plus 4, 2. The following lists only a few, how do quantum physicists regard light waves? Added to the mix of the mathematically rich quantum theory was an idea developed by French physicist Prince Louis Victor Pierre Raymond de Broglie, 1892-1987, who discovered the wave nature of electrons and of particles in general, and also devised a mathematical explanation of the kinetic theory of heat. He determined that not only do light waves often exhibit particle-like properties, but particles also often exhibit wave-like properties. This opened a kin of quantum worms. From there, two different formulations of quantum mechanics developed. First was the wave mechanics of Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger, 1887-1961, who used a mathematical entity. The wave function, related to the probability of finding a particle in space at a given point. Schrödinger also developed a model of the atom that differed from the traditional Niels Bohr model. Second and mathematically equal to Schrödinger's theory was the matrix. Mechanics of German physicist Werner Karl Heisenberg, 1901-1976 Fluid mechanics This is the study of air, water, and other fluids in motion. It includes the mathematics of turbulence, wave propagation, and so on. Geophysics This is a geological study with a physics basis. Much of the field is dominated by the mathematics of large-scale movement of materials. Such as earthquakes, volcanic activity, and fluid mechanics, for example, underground molten volcanic material. Optics This is the mostly mathematical study of the propagation and evolution of electromagnetic waves. Such as diffraction and the path of light rays. Optics requires a great knowledge of geometry and trigonometry, not to mention complex equations. What are tiling and dissection puzzles?
Tiling puzzles are two-dimensional shapes that are reassembled into a larger given shape without overlaps. The best examples of these are dissection puzzles, the most common ones are those in which an object is converted to another by making a finite number of cuts, then reassembling the pieces. Most of the cuts are represented by straight lines, but not always. In addition, sometimes the cut object can be reassembled into two or more shapes. Why was the Bernoulli family important to mathematics? The Bernoulli, also seen as Bernoulli, family of the 17th and 18th centuries is synonymous with mathematics and science. One of the developers of ordinary calculus, calculus of variations. And the first to use the word integral was Jacob Bernoulli, 1654-1705, also known as Jacob, Jacques, or James. He also wrote about the theory of probability, is often credited for developing the field of statistics. And discovered a series of numbers that bear his name. The coefficients of the exponential series expansion of x slash, 1 ex. Not to be outdone, his brother Johann, 1667-1748, also known as Jean or John. Contributed to the field of integral and exponential calculus. Was the founder of calculus of variations, and worked on geodesics, complex numbers, and trigonometry. His son was not far behind, Daniel Bernoulli, 1700-1782, was considered the first mathematical physicist. Publishing Hydrodynamica in 1738, which included his now famous principle named in his honor. Bernoulli's principle, and he brought out two ideas that were ahead of his time by many years. The law of conservation of energy and the kinetic molecular theory of gases. The Bernoulli legacy did not end there. With family members continuing to make great mathematical and scientific contributions. There were two Nicolas Bernoullis, one, the brother of Jacob and Johann. 1662 to 1716, was professor of mathematics at St. Petersburg. Russia's Academy of Sciences, the other. The son of Johann and brother of Daniel, 1695 to 1726, was also a mathematician. Another Johann Bernoulli, 1710 to 1790, was another son of Johann and brother of Daniel, who succeeded his father in the chair of mathematics at Basel, Switzerland, and also contributed to physics. The younger Johann also had a son named Johann, 1746-1807, who was astronomer royal in Berlin and also studied mathematics and geography. Finally, Jacob Bernoulli, 1759-1789, yet another son of the younger Johann, succeeded his uncle Daniel in teaching mathematics and physics at St. Petersburg, but he met an untimely death by drowning. Can we change the calendars now in use?
The present calendar is an annual one and changes every year much to the happiness of calendar publishers. This is because 365 days in a year is not evenly divisible by the number of days in the week. 365-7 equals 52, with the remainder of 1, or 52.142857. This means that a given year usually begins and ends on the same weekday, and it also means that the next year bumps January 1st, and all following dates. To the next weekday, and a new calendar is born each year. But because the calendar we now have is so ingrained in everything we do. It is doubtful that there will be any changes soon. Not that there haven't been suggestions. One is called the World, or World's Day, calendar, in which each date would always fall on the same day of the week. And all the holidays occur on the same day of the year. With this calendar, each year begins on Sunday, January 1st, and each working year begins on Monday. January 2nd. The reason why the calendar is called perpetual or perennial is that the year ends with a 365th day following December 30th, which is marked with a W for World's Day, our current December 31. Leap year days would still have to be added, such as at the end of June, some suggest a June 31 be added. Both extra days could act as world holidays. How does one calculate heart rate during exercise? One reason to calculate heart rate during exercise is to know if a person is getting beneficial exercise to keep the heart and body healthy. In order to determine the safe and effective range of exercise to get cardiovascular benefits, two measurements are often taken. The first is the maximal heart rate, a number related to a person's age, the heart beats slower with age. To estimate the maximal heart rate, subtract a person's age from the number 220. For example, if someone is 40 years old, his or her maximal heart rate is 180. The next measurement is the target heart rate zone. This number uses the maximal heart rate and represents the number of times per minute at which a heart should be beating during aerobic exercise. For most healthy people, the range is 50% at the lower limit to 80, some charts say 75% at the upper limit of their maximal heart rate. When a person's heart rate reaches a value within this zone during exercise, it means he or she has achieved a level of activity that contributes to his or her cardiovascular fitness. For instance, from the above example of a maximal heart rate of 180, the beats per minute. For the lower range would be 180 multiplied by 50%, 0.50, or 90 beats per minute. The upper range would be 180 multiplied by 80%, 0.80 or 144 beats per minute. If you work out and maintain a lower than 50 or higher than 80% limit, there are few beneficial effects from the exercise. In terms of the lower limit, the heart is not working hard enough for any cardiovascular benefit. In terms of the upper limit, 
besides the strain and injuries that can result. The heart is working too fast for any benefit and the body can't replenish oxygen that quickly.